Rivian, the electric truck company, gets 700 million investment by Amazon. Although the investment round was led by Amazon, this doesn't rule out the possibility that General Motors was an investor too, as was previously reported. For Rivian, this means that the reality of its R1T electric truck and R1S electric SUV now becomes a step closer. Here is a portion of the press release. Rivian has announced an equity investment round of $700 million led by Amazon. The investment comes on the heels of Rivian's reveal of the all-electric R1T pickup and R1S SUV at the LA Auto Show last November. Starting with a clean sheet, Rivian has developed its vehicle with adventurers at the core of every design and engineering decision. The company's launch products, the R1T and R1S, deliver up to 400 plus miles range and provide an unmatched combination of performance, off-road capability, and utility. These vehicles use the company's flexible skateboard platform and will be produced at Rivian's manufacturing plant in Normal, Illinois, with customer deliveries expected to start in late 2020. Okay guys, we are about to see the reveal of the Rivian R1T electric pickup truck and the R1S SUV. Before we watch the event, here are some highlights. Both of the vehicles have similar specs. The top of the line versions can hit 0 to 60 miles per hour in 3 seconds, have 800 horsepower and 14,000 newton meters of torque. So now let's take a look at these incredible vehicles. So here this is our R1T. We showed this last night. There's now some pictures out on this vehicle. And next to me is our R1S, a seven passenger, three row SUV. And these two vehicles are sharing the same platform, deliver exceptional performance, zero to 60 in three seconds, great on-road performance, great off-road performance, and a ton of utility. But what you're first seeing here as you look at these is a very unique front end, a very unique face. And these vehicles share uh, the same unique headlight graphic, and unique what we call daytime running light, running across the vehicle. And as you look at this, this unique graphic, it gives us something that's unlike anything else in the market. When you see it, you instantly recognize it. You know, seeing it out in the wild, whether that's on the road, whether that's in the mountains, whether that's, you know, on a trail, it's something that you instantly remember. And of course, in that, the, sort of the key element you're noticing is this headlight graphic. And we call this a stadium light, and it houses our high beams, our low beams, and it's flanked by this cross car daytime running light. And it gives it a sense of strength, a sense of position. And we wanted to make sure that when we did this, we created a face that was unlike any other face we've seen on an adventure vehicle before. It needed to make sure it was making a statement that it was a different kind of vehicle underneath, but still very confident and strong. Now, interestingly, in addition to providing that daytime running light, this center portion here in both the R1S and the R1T is your charge indicator. So we're showing here the vehicle fully charged, uh, but as the vehicle is lower, less charged, you'd see this. It'd actually give you the indication also on the rear of the vehicle. Now, in addition to the very unique graphic we see here on the front, the rest of the vehicle, the surfacing, the design, really is working to communicate a sense of strength, a sense of purpose, a sense of utility and function, but simultaneously, a level of sophistication and intelligence. And you can see in the body graphics carrying around, the sheer surfacing, the very clean line work, it's intended to make a statement that this is a vehicle that you can use, you can get dirty, but it, it's still a very intelligent, thoughtful design. Now, unfortunately, these vehicles are sitting still here, so you can't see them moving. Uh, we'll show you some more videos of them moving here in a moment. Before we do that, I want to show some of the features and talk about not only the technology the vehicle that develops enables the kind of performance we've talked about, but also how we enable these types of ventures I, said, I talked about. So whether that's say, carrying your gear, carrying your family. So in both the vehicles, in the front of the vehicle, we have what we consider to be a very large uh, storage compartment that's followed by a cabin that invites you to get into it. It's comfortable, it's large. And what we've done is we've combined the materials in that cabin, where we put some classically premium materials and integrated those with some materials that are very durable. They can get worn on, you can get them dirty, they're easy to clean. The kinds of things you'd see in a ski jacket, the kinds of things you'd see in outdoor gear. 
And what you see here are pictures from the R1T. And this is a five passenger vehicle, very comfortable seating package. Uh, but that same mentality, that same philosophy of cleanability, durability, third row, both fold fully flat, enabling a great storage space. Now, as we think about the design of the interior, uh, that's fitting all the people, it's fitting your gear, but we've also, also put a lot of time into thinking about the other storage compartments. We have a very large front trunk or a frunk with 330 liters of storage. And we're gonna show you this trunk it, opening up and it can fit all kinds of stuff, whether that's your cooler, your backpack, your, your full-size suitcase, even a golf bag. And this is something that's easy to get into, loading things, it's easy to take things out of. And very importantly, not only does it power up, it powers down. So if you're pulling grocery bags out, it makes it easy to access that storage compartment. Now, in addition to the front trunk, there's what we call a gear tunnel. It's a storage compartment that goes straight through the side of the vehicle, and it enables you to put, obviously, lots of very long things, whether that's a stroller, a golf bag, a snowboard, even a surfboard can fit into this side compartment. Now, in addition to it storing all those things, that compartment and the door for that compartment acts as a wonderful step. It acts as an area to sit on. It allows you to prep. Let's say you're going to the beach and throwing on a wetsuit. Let's say you're putting on your boots before a big hike. It also acts as a way to, as Larry was just showing us, stepping on it. If you're loading something onto the roof, it makes it very easy to access the roof. In fact, we want to have the easiest vehicle in the world to put things on the roof of. Now, in addition to the the frunk, which is the same on both vehicles, the gear tunnel, the back of the vehicles have been designed for a lot of packaging space as well. In the case of the, the R1T, behind the axle, we have a full-size spare that also acts as an area you can put additional storage. Similarly, on the R1S, with the seats folded flat, you have a large compartment to put things. But behind the third row, there's an additional storage compartment as well. Now, in both vehicles, we've integrated a host of features that when you get to that adventure, whether you need to plug in or, or air up your tires on your bike, we make that very easy. Both vehicles have an integrated compressed air package. It leverages the, the air suspension on the vehicle, 110 volt outlets throughout the back of the vehicle. And then we have a racking system that's really elegant. It's very easy to use. It collapses, it fits into the front, uh, but the same racking system works on our R1S on the roof or in the bed rails, or within the bed, or on the roof of the R1T. Now, we've spent some time going through some of these packaging features. We see we can put all this gear into the vehicle, and we're thinking, well, how is that possible? Of course, not having an engine gives us some advantages, but the way we've laid out the architecture, we have what we call a skateboard architecture, where essentially the whole lower half of the vehicle, all below the wheels, we carry all the core elements necessary to drive the vehicle. So your battery system, your drive system, your cooling system, the entirety of the suspension, all of our digital network architecture carried in this thin skateboard platform. And what that allows us is to fit all those storage compartments, allows us to fit the front trunk, allows us to fit the gear tunnel, allows us to fit under seat storage in the second row, which I, I haven't even talked about. Uh, and then of course the storage behind the rear of the vehicle. So, the beauty, as I said before, of a clean sheet is you can do all these things and you can leverage the benefits of a platform to put storage, put occupant comfort into a vehicle in a way that we haven't seen before. Now, in addition to all those packaging benefits, let's talk a little bit about the performance of the vehicle. At the core of the skateboard is our battery system. And our battery system, the largest configuration, largest battery pack, delivers over 180 kilowatt hours of energy, 180 kilowatt hours. And that allows the R1T to go more than 400 miles in range, and the R1S with a little bit better aerodynamics, slightly further on a single charge. And what that battery system is made up of is a series of modules. Um, and you see these, this module here blown apart. That module carries 15 kilowatt hours of energy, and our biggest pack combines 12 of those, 12 of those 15 kilowatt hour modules for a total of 180. And the way we're able to fit so much energy capacity in the floor of this vehicle is we package the cells very efficiently and managed the temperature of those cells with a very sophisticated thermal control system. And the battery management system, which we've designed and developed completely in-house, is very intelligent. 
In fact, it learns your behavior. It learns how you drive, and very importantly, it learns how you charge. And all that learning comes in to allow us to better control the battery, protect its health, give you maximum range, utilize as much of the cell as we can. Now, I could spend 30, 40 minutes talking about the battery, but I won't, I won't put you guys through that. We'll talk about some of the performance aspects of the vehicle. Let's move on to the powertrain. And sitting on the outside of both in the front and the rear of the vehicle, we have what we call a quad drive system. And that quad drive system delivers 147 kilowatts of power per wheel. Each wheel is controlled individually by a single motor. And what that allows us to do is to very precisely send torque to any wheel in any direction instantaneously. We can do things like torque vectoring. So if you're at a high speed condition, the vehicle can feel very agile. If you're in a very slippery surface, let's say you're off road, let's say you're rock crawling, let's say you're in the mud, let's say you're on a dirt trail, we can send torque instantaneously wherever it needs to go. And we're sending close to 800 horsepower to the ground, 14,000 newton meters of torque. And what that allows, in addition to this beautiful dynamic performance and the ability to place torque where you need it, allows very brisk acceleration. So I mentioned before, zero to 60 in three seconds. Uh, the vehicle goes fully up to 100 uh, in under seven seconds. Top speed on the vehicles is 125. For these vehicles, we didn't think they needed to go much faster than 125. Uh, but the vehicles are very quick on the way to get there. Now, when we look at the drive units, you see this very elegant, quad motor setup. What that also enables is a, a, a suspension architecture, very importantly, a drive shaft architecture that gives us the kind of articulation that you won't find in any, any other vehicle in terms of suspension articulation. And what enables that are these long half shafts, these half shafts that extend essentially from the center line of the vehicle out to the wheel. And they allow you to have significant amount of wheel travel and enable the suspension system which has an air suspension, active roll control, and adaptive damping, have a lot of adjustability. So if you're off-road, these vehicles, vehicles can raise up to over 360 millimeters of ground clearance. Here they're sitting at about 280, so quite a bit of additional ground clearance. Now if you're on a highway and you want better aerodynamics, they can tuck down to about 230 millimeters of ground clearance, about 50 lower than what you see here. And if you're getting out of the, in and out of the vehicle, they can go into a kneel mode, making it very easy to get them out with about 200 millimeters of ground clearance. So that broad range of suspension adjustability is all enabled because of the way the drive shafts are set up and this multi-link suspension in the rear and a double A-arm in the front. Now, <clears throat> we talked about suspension, we talked about powertrain, we talked about all these things coming together into this skateboard architecture. This skateboard is shared identically with the exceptional length between these two vehicles. So same drivetrain, same battery pack, same cooling system, same control systems. The entirety of the network architecture, the digital layer within the vehicle, we've designed and built in-house. All the ECUs, the domain controllers, we built those to enable a very secure platform. Very secure. And what that allows is a level of connectivity and self-driving that's unlike any other vehicle you've seen in this space. So the vehicle integrates cameras, radar, high precision GPS, two LIDARs sitting in the front of the vehicle. So we can deliver a level of off-road self-driving and on-road self-driving that we haven't seen in the market before. Now, as we start to think about all those features that, that come together, it's important that we recognize it also enables this broad capability. And we talked about acceleration, we talked about wheel articulation, we talked about center of gravity being very low, with the battery pack being in the middle of the vehicle. What that drives is an approach angle and a departure angle that's very aggressive. So 34 degree approach angle, uh, 30 degree departure angle. And then in the case of the R1T, 26 degree breakover. In the case of the R1S, a 30 degree breakover because the wheelbase is, is shorter. This also allows the vehicle to go a very steep gradients. It allows it to tow quite a bit. Um, the R1T tows over 11,000 pounds, 5,000 kilograms. Um, in terms of its ability to climb, there's a vehicle that can go up a 45 degree gradient or down a 45 degree gradient. That center of gravity really helps the torque and the torque control really help with that. Now, this is also a vehicle that because it doesn't have to breathe air, there's no engine on the vehicle, it can wade through very deep water. 
the vehicle can wade through over a meter of water, which puts the water up to about here to go anywhere. So whether you're crossing a stream uh, or whether you're, uh, you have to drive up to the edge of a fishing location, we can do that in this vehicle. Um, as we've thought about all that, I talked before about this digital architecture. We've also designed the interior and the digital experience to be very intuitive and to enable you to go on those adventures. Let's find the adventure, find the location, make it very easy to use the vehicle, make it easy to interact with the vehicle. So we have a tile-based system on our center touchscreen that allows you to quickly move through applications. It allows you an easy in-vehicle portal into our cloud-based architecture. Uh, and that, as I said, connects into the self-driving platform as well, uh, which enables you to really, as you, as you get out there, get on the highway, take your hands off the wheel, eyes off the road, and relax. After a long day at the slopes, after a long day in the office, you may not want to be on the steering wheel in traffic on the highway. And that all comes together into a vehicle that ultimately we're seeing these things nice and clean here need to get dirty. They need to be used. The basic litmus of how we think about our products is would you be comfortable throwing your kids in the back and taking them to the beach? Would you let your kid hold the juice box in the back? I have two boys and a third on the way, so this is very close to my heart. So the cleanability, the usability on the inside and the usability on the outside are very important. So now we're gonna show you some of these vehicles doing the things that they should be doing, which is out, out in the wild, having fun, exploring, and getting dirty. The r and the r and are really fun to drive. Unfortunately, I'd love to have everybody here have a chance to drive them. At some point, hopefully we will. Um, but uh, that video just gives you a, a flavor of how accessible the performance is on these vehicles. I want to thank everyone for listening to this presentation, this presentation and, and seeing our vehicles as we show them to the world. Uh, just in terms of timing, the vehicles are available in the second half of 2020. Um, so we're coming up, we're getting very close to production. What you see here is what will be on the market. Uh, we've spent a lot of time, thousands and thousands of decisions, as I said, hundreds of people putting this together to make sure all the pieces are lined up. The technology, the organization, the supply chain, the manufacturing system, our financial structure, to make sure we can deliver these vehicles. We're very excited to show these, and, and thank you again.